Great. Uh, thanks, Krista. So I'm an infectious disease doctor who started working at the Reagan just over 10 years ago uh, as the institute was being formed. And what really drew me here was the opportunity, the really unique opportunity to practice at one of the top hospitals in the nation while also performing patient-focused research that, sp that spanned the bridge between the US and South Africa. And during this decades-long history, I've had the privilege to work with engineers at MIT to apply new technologies to questions on the ground in Africa while coordinating closely with the staff and participants of Fresh, uh, collaborating with South African researchers, just as Slim and, and Krista, um, teaching at the Nelson Mandela School of Medicine, and also hosting a number of wonderful students and um, visitors to, to Durban. And, you know, all while maintaining a clinical practice at MGH. And it's been such a remarkable privilege to be a part of this institute, and it really wouldn't have been possible at all without this very, very special place. So I want to tell you a little bit about the, the research that we're doing. So as Slim, as Slim introduced, a critical problem in HIV is stopping new infections in young women in sub-Saharan Africa, who clearly bear a disproportionate burden of this epidemic. And any solution to end HIV has to include a solution for these young women. And since globally over 90% of HIV is transmitted through heterosexual sex, understanding those first initial events of transmission at the female genital tract is really critical to, to learning how to stop HIV. Uh, and some of our, one of our primary focuses of our research has been understanding what are the biological factors within the female genital tract that affect a woman's risk of acquiring HIV. And one of these factors is the vaginal microbiome. Now, the vagina has a huge number of bacteria, billions of bacteria that normally actually do, uh, it's a community that normally maintains healthy activity and, and performs really important functions for health. So what we're taught in medical school is that a healthy microbiome is actually all, for the most part, consists of one particular bacterial species called lactobacillus. And lactobacillus is thought to do really good things. They basically maintain a low pH, they produce antibacterial compounds, and all of those effects of lactobacillus help prevent bad bacteria from taking hold in the vagina. But it's really important to remember that this concept of health has really been developed based primarily of studies of uh, young white women in developed regions. And so we wanted to better understand the vaginal microbiome in the young, healthy women in fresh. And so at this point, what had primarily been used to study the vaginal microbiome were older techniques where you would take a vaginal swab and just apply it to a microscope slide and then look to see what bacteria were there. But we had an opportunity to apply next generation sequencing technologies by taking that same vaginal swab and sequencing all of the bacterial DNA in that sample to comprehensively assess the vaginal microbiome using these new technologies. And what we found was very interesting. So in this group of young, healthy women, and in this, in this display, each column is a, is a fresh participant, and each color is a different type of bacteria. What we found was that only a small number of the women actually had a, what we typically thought of as a healthy vaginal microbiome composed of lactobacillus. Most of the women in the study actually had these really diverse communities with lots of different bacteria and very low amounts of lactobacillus. And that was very striking because, as I said, if you look at white, white women in the U.S., 90% of them have a lactobacillus-dominant community. But within the fresh cohort, these young, healthy women, most of them did not have that kind of community. And interestingly, these women who had these more diverse vaginal bacterial communities had higher levels of general inflammation and more activated immune cells, in particular a type of immune cell called a CD4 T cell. And that was important because the CD4 T cells thought to be the first target of infection by HIV within the general tract. And so what we saw was that looking prospectively, women who had these more diverse vaginal bacterial communities actually acquired HIV at over fourfold higher rates, even when you controlled for sexual behavior risk. So we've since done additional studies to better understand the mechanism of this. And we've come to this model which suggests that women who have lactobacillus dominant communities have low levels of inflammation in the general tract, but women who are mostly, who most of the women in fresh actually comprise, who have these more diverse vaginal communities, have high levels of general inflammation and a high number of these activated CD4 T cells in the general tract. 
so that when, when, when these women are exposed to HIV through heterosexual sex with an infected male partner, there are more targets uh, for HIV to infect, and therefore there's a higher probability of establishing an infection. So now really the next question is, how do we leverage this information to try to prevent HIV in young women? Because that's always been one of our primary goals. So later this year, we'll be starting a interventional trial using externally applied bacteria to try to durably shift the vaginal microbiome to try to reduce HIV risk. And we're also performing additional studies to use synthetic vaginal communities or engineered bacteria that hopefully will be able to more uh, easily durably persist within the general tract. So I've told you a little bit about the work that we've been doing looking at HIV acquisition risk. I'll now actually introduce Zaza, my friend and colleague, who's gonna tell you a little bit about what happens in the earliest stages of HIV infection within the FRESH cohort.